My name is Chris Perrins. I'm originally from Wisconsin, but now spend winters in Florida. My morning habit in Sarasota is to take a quick walk around the nearby harbor, making sure my phone camera is in my pocket. I never know what inspirational sight I'll want to capture. It might be anything from a multicolored boat reflection to a quietly surfacing manatee. On this morning, I spied the green heron, secretively tucked under the mangroves, directing all of his concentration on the water below. Green herons have been observed using tools. They sometimes drop an insect or a twig into the water and then grab the fish that is attracted by their bait. Most days, when I got too close to the green heron, he would give me a raucous squawk while flapping across the harbor, landing with a series of scolding chicken-like clucks. But this day, he was focused on the task of spearing his fishy breakfast, allowing me to crouch down and point my camera through the boardwalk railing to capture a series of reference photos. Back in my studio, I edited the photos on my computer, combining two shots to get the composition I had in mind. I wanted to portray the way the bird blends into the shadows under the mangrove. I especially liked the patterned reflection of the sky. When I was satisfied with the arrangement, I used the resulting image as reference for my drawing on tracing paper. Next, I created small color wheels in watercolor to test my choice of primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to see how they blended together. Then I mixed up a small quantity of each in three baby food jars. After transferring my drawing to watercolor paper, I applied masking fluid to the area of the bird and some of the highlights in the foliage. Masking fluid acts as a resist and protects those areas from my later wet-into-wet -wet painting of the background. I wet the paper and poured the colors out, allowing them to swirl and blend together. I spattered plain water here and there for texture. After that dried, I applied more masking fluid in different areas and repeated the process, building up colors and getting darker with each layer. Because watercolor is transparent, each new layer affected the earlier colors, except where it was protected by masking fluid. To complete the painting, I removed the masking fluid, which peels off like rubber cement, revealing the white paper and lighter colors underneath. Employing traditional brushwork, I then painted the bird and finalized the details in the leaves and twigs. Here's the final watercolor painting, Green Heron, Red Mangrove.